we'd move on to what will be the last of the video uh, testimonies from this conference that was held. Um, Skip Brown, who is uh, owner of a trucking company, uh, I will offer it now as Exhibit 1C or 1D, and then I'll offer it for admission after we see it. Okay. Our next speaker is Norman Skip Brown. He's president of Delta, Constru Delta Construction Company in Sacramento. Uh, Skip's company is 66 years old, and he's been with it for the last 44 years. Is that all? That's all. Uh, Skip is not a, um, uh, a PhD, but he is an acknowledged expert in the field of aquatic flora and fauna. And by that I mean he's a fisherman, and he gets in the weeds all the time. He's also a, a very active member of the Off-Road Implementation Advisory Group in Sacramento where we sit down with the ARB staff and kind of um, play a little bit of uh, telling the truth and see what kind of answers we can get. And he's a good friend of mine. Skip Brown. Thank you, Bill. As a businessman of some 44 years in California, I've found it works best if you play by the rules. They make a rule, figure out how to meet it, stay in business. And so initially I tried to work with CARP in playing by the rules. And when they made the portable equipment registration program, I registered all my portable equipment, which, by the way, they can now take away from me at the end of this year. <coughs> Keep that in mind when they ask you to register your guns. I am a member of the Off-Road Implementation Action Group, as Bill stated. I joined that. I represent small business in the state of California for the the off-highway construction equipment into trying to help lead them into doing something that we can live with. Uh, I have found that over the last two years of attempting to work with these fine folks, and, uh, and I'm not being facetious, the, the staff members are fine folks. They have a job to do. They have their marching orders. They're trying their darndest to doing it, and they're doing a good job of it. They do not understand business. They do not understand economics. They do not understand what it takes to be in business. And so they have written a regulation that basically will devastate all small and medium businesses in California. We are history. If this regulation is allowed to be implemented, which is in the process now, we are history. There is not enough money out there for us to replace our equipment in the manner of which they say that we can. They have destroyed 95% of the net worth of my assets that I have developed over the last 44 years by regulation. They destroy the business model that makes the capitalistic system work. The businessman saves a bit of money, and he doesn't go out and buy a ski do or a summer home or a yacht. He invests that into an asset that stimulates another dollar and stimulates employment and builds a tax base for our government to exist on. If you didn't have business people building that tax base and providing for unemployment, there would be no tax base for a government. And maybe that's what has to happen because they are destroying the tax base and the government itself is destroying itself by doing this. But that's their mantra. That's where they're going. This will end up being a regressive tax on all the citizens of this state. For the people least likely to afford increases in cost of goods and services, they're going to go up drastically. Everything from apples to whiskey is going to cost you a lot more money. By the way, you perhaps know this best, it is brought to you by trucks. Now they're going to destroy the transportation industry after they're doing a good job on the off-highway industry and the portable equipment industry. I own all three. I've got three regulations that I'm trying to fight. The fight is a losing battle. This business, 66 years, will probably last another three years, providing we survive the downturn in the economy that we're trying to survive right now. I haven't taken a salary since September of last year because I want to keep my people. My people are my assets. I can buy and sell equipment. I can't replace these people. And I can survive for another couple of years by not taking a salary, but my people can't. They need that paycheck every month. And I have to create that income. It, nobody gave it to me. There's no government program that applies to a company that is in business. You have to be just about out of business. You have to be barely bankable, as they said, in order to get the special deal on the loans. Well, I'm not barely bankable yet. But even if I wanted to borrow the money on the special deal, where would I get the, the revenue to pay the loan off? I'm not working my equipment. You know, my equipment is working at about 30% of what it should be doing right now. So this reminds me of the Prop 65 
boondoggle. The Prop 65 issue is where they allow people to sue those who cause cancer. And so the asphalt industry, of which I'm in, was threatened to be sued because we have a potential carcinogen in the mix of asphalt. Nobody's ever been able to claim that they've, they've gotten cancer from asphalt and asphalt concrete, but the threat was there. So the industry formed together, and I ponied up about $10,000 to join the group to try to fight the issue. And after about a year of the attorneys spending our money, they decided that if we all ponied up money and paid the plaintiffs off, they would not file suit. That was another $10,000. It cost me $20,000 and a sign on my door that says, caution, if you enter this facility, it may cause cancer. I cured cancer for $20,000. I felt real good about that. This one, this one's going to cost a lot more than $20,000 to cure this one. So I had an, a, an option. I said, well, I can just shut down, send all my people home. It would have been good to me. I've got employees been with me over 30 years. I can just shut down and send them home and say, I'm sorry. I'm going to save whatever money I can sell this stuff for now, whatever it's worth, and provide for my retirement. After all, I've got my Medicare card, so I can, ought to be able to retire, right? Or I could try to survive and fight it. Well, they cut me off at the knees, and I decided, all right, I'll fight them on my knees. So I started looking at what these gentlemen have already presented to you, the doc, Dr. Trent in his diploma. Well, I went down and looked at some of the authors. There's a Lori Maya Soto. Uh, who is also an author, and she has a real doctor. She has a doctor of philosophy. Well, there's some credo there. And, and she did an abstract for her doctoral studies on the uh, dissertation exploring the role of visual cues, cues, time frames, and latent behavioral systems in the California ground squirrel. There we go. I'm a squirrel hunter. <laughs> I go to Northern California where squirrels are about 10 to 20 per acre and I go up there to an alfalfa farm of 2,000 acres who has a neighborhood of 20 to 40,000 squirrels and I help him eliminate those squirrels. And I thought, well maybe with his doctoral thesis, maybe I could figure out how to call them back up. And I, in chapter one, studies the visual cues and short-term ground squirrel assessment of repetitive chatter chat. I found Dr. Dunn's link to his chattering people. It's a chattering of squirrels. It makes that much sense. So I begin to review the scientific support for the regulation, which there, which there isn't, which is what you've heard today. I've reviewed the Code of Federal Regulations, which prohibits states from setting emission standards for non-road engines and vehicles for new engines used in farm and construction with a maximum power below 175 horsepower. So I thought, well, wait a minute. They can't regulate these engines below 175 horsepower. It says right that in the Code of Federal Regulations. So I talked to an attorney, and he says, well, they determined in District 2 of the, uh, of the court system, it's back in Washington someplace, that that meant showroom new. I said, showroom new? Well, does that mean if they're on the showroom floor? And he said, yeah, the only if they're on the showroom floor, they can't regulate those engines. I said, well, those engines are parked. They're not even a bitty. So it, it, it makes... Car CARB says they get around us by they're regulating the use of the engines, not the emissions of the engines. Well, there's a distinction without a difference. <laughs> they're not going to regulate the emissions, but you won't let me use it. <laughs> okay. Well, they say I can go low use by keeping it under 1,000 miles a year on my trucks. Well, my trucks support my construction activities. They run a little bit over 1,000 miles a year, usually between seven and 10,000 miles a year. Well, no, you've got to regulate those just like you're going 150,000 miles a year up and down the state highways. So they have the John Moyer Foundation, which will give you money to upgrade your equipment. But I don't qualify because I don't get enough hours or miles on my vehicles. So it's not good enough for the state of California to supply me the money to replace this stuff, but somehow economically it pencils that I should. So I had some help and became the lead plaintiff in finding the lawsuit against the EPA over the scientific review panel formulation. That's the beginning. That's like a slap across the face with a soft white glove. I was hoping for more, you know, the stand up and pull your weapon type, but we haven't got there. I tried to get Pacific Legal Foundation, who was carrying this suit, 
to file under the takings clause of the, con of the Constitution. The U.S. takings clause says that the government takes your personal property, they have to pay you for it. What, come and take it and pay me? I'll go buy new stuff and I'll keep my people working. They said, no, we can't do it on the takings clause. I said, why is that? This was seven years and seven million dollars. And you usually lose. You're fighting City Hall. So it comes down to is, are we going to fight them? Then we've got to fight them in any way we can. I signed up for this lawsuit because of the fact that we put Al Capone in jail for tax evasion. I don't care how we stop them, but if we don't stop them, we're history. Unless you're a big business. The big businesses are going to be all right because all you medium-sized and small businesses are history. You're out of business unless you've got a big bankroll that you can go out and buy all new stuff. I asked CARB how I'm supposed to do that. This is one of their staff members. I won't mention the name. And the staff member says, you're going to have to raise your prices. <laughs> wow. I, this is so easy. I just raised my price. I bid my work. Low bidder gets the job. I can raise my prices and say, I need to raise my prices so you need to award me the job. It doesn't work that way. So we're going to file our lawsuits. There's hopefully another one in process. Uh, we're working on a se second one based upon the science, the, the, the bogus science, if you want to call it science. There's another way to do this, something that the construction industry couldn't do. We didn't have the horsepower. We didn't have the, the wherewithal. The trucking in industry has it. Everything that comes to everybody in the state of California is delivered on a truck. Everything. They all need to stop. Atlas Shrugged. We all need to stop. Five days. Five days. No gas at the gas station. No bananas at the grocery store. That will get their attention. I know you folks in here are dump truckers. Well, by yourself, we'll make a, an impression probably isn't big enough. We're going to have to get other groups. You're not going to get any help from the big boys because they like the fact that most of you other guys are going to be gone. But that's what would do it. So my intent is to try to get the word out with these gentlemen here to get the information of what we can and can't do. Another thing that you can do, support Pacific Legal Foundation. They are carrying the expense. I'm the lead plaintiff. There's nine of us all together. My bill for filing this lawsuit was $44.10. One ninth of the cost of the court filing. If we lose, we're going to file an appeal. It'll cost you another $44.10. We put in ads in the Daily Construction Service and, and all the business papers that we can find. Support Pacific Legal Foundation. If they see a groundswell of support, they're going to want to step up to that next level. That's what I'm asking for you today. Thank you very much for your time.